Business major? No. Yeah. For the most part? Either way, whether you're here as a business major or not, I'm, I have to tell you this. This is an excellent discussion of preparation. It's, we do it from a business context, but each of you actually is facing the same task as you go through Lee McRae College. Are you preparing yourself to engage in the next battlefront, which is the job market or wherever, or wherever you want to go? And this, this uh, process comes from a, uh, as we go through the business program, it goes through a course of strategy. Who are we today? Where we want to go tomorrow? And lastly, Christopher? How are we going to get there? How are we going to get there? It's the main function in life, ladies and gentlemen. So, we have two presentations. They're both outstanding uh, groups. The first will be uh, Mallory and Gunnar. You ready? Mm -hmm. Take the stage. They're going to talk about McDonald's. It's a difficult process. A difficult process to discuss, but it's up to date. It describes the battlefield that's going on in business relating to the fast food industry. Pay attention, this is uh, setting a new standard in senior research presentation. Okay. All right, good afternoon everyone. <coughs> uh, welcome to senior research presentations. I'm Mallory. I'm Gunnar Bergen. And today we'll be giving an in-depth analysis of McDonald's. Uh, first thing we want to point out is uh, over the four months that we have been er, researching this, a lot has changed and there's constantly new news articles each day, which has been challenging to keep up with, but it has also made it um, interesting. I want to start by asking you a question of can you, uh, raise your hand if you can remember the last time you ate at McDonald's. And would that answer be different if I asked you five or ten years ago? First off, we're just going to go over McDonald's mission statement. Uh, they broke it down into three simple parts for us. Uh, as far as good food, they want to promote choices, have real ingredients in their food, and provide transparency, especially when, they, when their food's been brought into question, like it has been recently. Uh, as far as good people, they want to provide opportunity, encourage diversity, and offer training. And as far as good neighbor, they want to champion happy and healthy kids, and keep families together through their charitable organizations, such as the Ronald McDonald House. We'll go over a quick overview of the history. It all started in 1940, when Dick and Mac McDonald opened a restaurant in um, California. About 10 years later, Ray Kroc found the business, um, loved it, and wanted to take it further. In 1959, they had opened their 100th restaurant, and four years later, they had opened 400 more. So they were expanding quite quickly, and it was time to go international. In 1967, they um, opened stores in Canada and Puerto Rico, and now they're in 119 countries. Recently, they were announced the top Olympic Games sponsor, and that is projected to be true until 2020. As far as competitive moves, uh, McDonald's has always been an innovator. They have been pushing the fast food industry to make changes since the very beginning. Uh, these are just a few of them. In 1961, the Hamburg University came out. It was a place where managers of franchisees could be sent and they could learn how to properly and efficiently run a McDonald's. Uh, you see the Ronald McDonald House since 1974. 1975, they started offering drive through which was at the forefront of the fast food industry. Not all of their competition was doing that yet and it took them a while to adapt. Uh, 1996, they had the website, and in 2010, all of their locations in the U.S. had Wi-Fi. McCafe was one of the biggest moves that they have made. Uh, it first launched in Australia in 1993, and within 10 years, it was the number one coffee store in both Australia and New Zealand. There's now 1,300 different uh, stores in 20 countries. Uh, reports have indicated that um, a McDonald's that has a McCafe will generate 15 uh, percent more revenue than a regular McDonald's. Uh, the business model of McDonald's is very good. They've had long-term <coughs> success because, like Gunnar said, they're the first to initiate. They're very innovative. They've had the objectives to provide convenience at a low cost, and they have taken on board the strategy of being modern and progressive. Modern because they're getting the brand to where it needs to be today, and progressive because they're doing what it takes to be where the customers want them tomorrow. They have good corporate, cover corporate governance. Um, they are built on a foundation of personal and professional integrity. And they achieve this by uh, serving safe food and respecting all people. They state that governance is a journey, not a destination. 
which means they will be making continuous improvements and showing integrity to all stakeholders. As far as the test of winning strategy, there are three. Uh, how well does the strategy fit the, current com the company's current situation? Uh, does the strategy provide a sustainable competitive advantage? And is the strategy producing good company performance? As far as the fit today, uh, McDonald's has always been great at crafting a strategy, implementing it, and knowing when to change it. Currently, they are in the process of changing their strategy. They know that it's not working, and they are making changes. As far as the competitive moves, uh, McDonald's has been an innovator from the beginning. We keep stressing this, and we can't stress it enough. They have been at the forefront of the fast food industry, and that is what enabled them to succeed. Uh, we talked about the drive-through, the Met Cafe. Today, currently, right now, they're working on implementing kiosks in the stores. Uh, the kiosk will be able to allow you to customize your order, as well as to ensure order accuracy. As far as the company performance, McDonald's has been decre de experiencing decreasing revenue, sales, earnings, growth, and market share. Uh, they know that it's not working, and they are working to improve it. I will look at the fast food industry as a whole. According to Euromonitor, they're having a, a good two years. Um, but the fast food industry is driven by price, efficiency, and availability. Um, currently, there's kind of a new segment under the fast food industry called fast casual dining. And fast casual dining is positioned very well in the market because they offer a um, cheap price still, but a healthy alternative. Uh, these companies are emphasizing on those signature items and then promoting new and innovative items. Um, that is because there's a new health trend in the market, which most of you are probably aware of. It's things like diet, where they're focusing on low sugar and low fat, or um, good for the environment, so locally grown or non-GMO, or fairness to animals and humans. Um, all of these are uh, caused by influence or influences such as doctors, families and friends, or and the media. These are uh, the top 10 global fast food um, companies as of right now, um, from left to right uh, being the top. They each have their own specialty, so Starbucks or coffee or Dairy Queen their ice cream, but nonetheless they all face uh, issues. A lot of times they're facing similar issues like the changing consumer or maybe um, removing antibiotics from their meat. And they also face uh, individual issues like um, maybe an E. coli breakout or a lawsuit, but they're all at price war because they're all trying to win uh, the customer, make money and be at the top. Uh, but the price war has a new element and that's a third of consumers have stated that they'd rather have healthier food than cheaper food. So discounted Whoppers and Big Macs will not do the trick alone. Uh, here's a breakdown of the market share for the fast food industry. This chart right here is from 2015. As you can see, McDonald's sits at 17%. Uh, if you were to go back to just 2011, they had 17.8%. Uh, that's an 0.8% decrease in market share. This is a very, very similar trend across all of the major players in the fast food industry. Uh, Young Brands, Wendy's, Subway, they're all having trouble holding on to their customers because of the growing fast casual market that Mallory just talked about. Um, Chipotle may not look like it's on the same level as some of the other ones because currently it only has 2.2% of the market share. Uh, that number seems small, but it's growing quickly. Um, they are catering what they're doing with their business strategy exactly to what the customer wants. They're going to ride this health trend as long as they can and uh, use it to grow their market share. Um, so it's really important for any business uh, to analyze their internal and external uh, competitive forces. As we learned here at Lisa McRae, these forces are a framework to analyze the different levels of competition within an industry and also just the uh, strategic development of a business. Uh, some of these forces are easier to control than others and they're usually all changing so McDonald's must keep up. In, in regards to competitive forces, um, it's very high for McDonald's because the existing competition already has their stores and they have a strong advertising capability. Buyer forces is low because there's lots of uh, customers walking in and out of the McDonald's each day. So not one customer has a bargaining leverage over the other. Suppliers is uh, low as well, which is a positive for McDonald's. Since there are so many suppliers, they're trying to lower their price for McDonald's. New entrance is high because the um, industry is an easy access market and it also has a low startup cost. And then substitutes is moderate, but it has been greater more than ever because the convenience industry is booming and they're offering um, hot, ready-to-go food. 
so it makes it easier for you to get your gas and food at the same stop. Ray Kroc had um, persuaded suppliers and franchisees to buy into his vision that you're not working for, McDon for McDonald's, but you're working for yourself with McDonald's. And so he um, had a philosophy called the three-legged stool, which means the stool is only as strong as all three legs. So if you translate that to the picture, the product is only as good as the employees, suppliers, and franchisees. So McDonald's a corporation wants to keep a good relationship with all legs. Uh, as far as resources go, uh, McDonald's is the world's largest fast food restaurant. They have 35,000 locations, 14,000 of which are located in the United States. They operate daily in 119 different countries, and they serve 68 customers, 68 million customers per day. Uh, this allows them to generate the revenue they needed to adapt to what the customer is changing wants are. Uh, again, as far as the customers changing wants, they have $4 billion on the, on the balance sheet. Uh, that's way more than any of their competitors have, and that allows, again, them to adapt and be able to afford to experiment with and find out what the customers want. Uh, so we're going to go over a brief SWOT analysis of McDonald's. Uh, first, we're going to start with their strengths. McDonald's has always been able to provide meals at a convenient and low price. Uh, that is because they've continually been innovative. Uh, they have a very established brand image. It's recognizable. It's the sixth most recognizable brand according to Forbes. Uh, they have established locations, like we said, and their menu is very varied. Um, as far as their weaknesses, uh, the managerial direction, um, we think that they want to turn the company around so they want to turn around so quickly that they're trying everything and everything to make that possible uh, instead of focusing on a, cute, a few key factors that could get it done quicker and more effectively. Uh, they currently are placing a lot of stress on the franchisees with all the menu changes, the equipment upgrades, all these things that they're forcing down the fran franchisees. They're not happy and that's stressing the relationship they have with them. And like Mallory just said, their product is only as good as the three legs and right now the franchisees are not happy. Uh, this is also the first year that they have shut down more locations than they open, and this is a trend that cannot continue. For the opportunities, uh, we feel that tapping back in with the children and the younger generations, uh, you don't have people as much craving to get happy meals and such anymore. Uh, it's out of touch, it's not cool anymore, and we think that McDonald's can tap back into the younger generations. Uh, as far as a global company going local, they do an excellent job of this with catering their locations to the market that they're in. You can see this in the North American, the European, and the Asian markets. We suggest that they take that to an even more local level, uh, let's say in Appalachia or in downtown New York, things like that. Cater those locations to the specific area that they're in. Another opportunity is the health trend. Uh, McDonald's right now is maybe not on the right side of that thing. They need to get a grasp of what their consumer wants and change their menu to match their needs. But if they can do that, that is a huge opportunity for growth. And as far as regrets, uh, new entrants, like Mallory said, the startup costs are relatively low, so you can have people entering. Uh, as far as existing competition, you can look at Wendy's, Burger King, McDonald's, all of the other big, huge players in the fast food industry. They're trying to do the same thing that McDonald's is. They're trying to turn their companies around, their innovation, menu changes, getting on board with the health trend, and they're all trying to do the same thing. So competition is just going to continue to stay high. And the minimum wage, McDonald's provides their food on a low cost, business model, uh, if the minimum wage were to increase, they would have a hard time achieving that. Here is a quick chart of the cost structure. Uh, according to an analyst of the New York Times, she said that McDonald's cost structure is very similar to the rest of the fast food industry. This chart right here is for the fast food industry. You can see that most of their uh, money is spent on purchases and paying wages. So that just goes back to saying that the minimum wage increase would have a serious impact on McDonald's. As far as the value proposition, uh, again, very similar to the rest of the fast food industry. All fast food companies want to provide a low cost, convenient meal and deliver the same experience every time you enter their location. If you look at the strengths over rivals specifically, um, branding is huge. When you think of McDonald's, you likely think of the Golden Arches or a Big Mac or Ronald McDonald. And that's because McDonald's has embedded these brand images into Americans at such an early age. They make tough choices. So like I said about the McCafe, it was an expensive and bold move. They didn't know if it would work or not, but that's what's remarkable about, remarkable about McDonald's is they are not afraid to lose. They speak to children. I know from, I remember as a kid, I used to want to get a Happy Meal and get the toy out of it. So they've 
had that capability to reach the children, whether that be through their uh, TV commercials or their Ronald McDonald House. They're always first. We've mentioned this probably three or four times, and we want to emphasize on this because they're literally the most innovative company I can think of. Um, they are trying to always set the standards in the market. And uh, an example would be, they were the first fast food company to implement a credit card point of sales system in early 2000. Um, but nonetheless, if a company does something that maybe they didn't think of, they will definitely copy it and they will definitely try to do it better. Uh, something like that might be um, Dairy Queen, they had their blizzards, um, um, Donald came up with McFlurries. As far as strategic, strategic issues, we've identified four that are seeming really troubling. McDonald's, uh, the changing consumer, the consumers once don't match up with McDonald's has to offer anymore, and they know that, they're working on fixing it. As far as the service, quality, and cleanliness, McDonald's is now having to compete with these casual restaurants that they didn't have to compete with before. These restaurants have higher quality of service, higher quality of cleanliness, just an overall better experience. So McDonald's needs to step up their game in order to compete with them. As far as doing too much, uh, they really want to get the company back on track and they're trying everything and everything, maybe too much. Uh, they're messing with things that are working, which we don't think is a good idea. And again, the minimum wage, if minimum wage was to increase, weren't increasing, uh, McDonald's would have a hard time maintaining their low cost business model. Uh, here's the 2015 quarter three report that we've been talking about. Uh, since Steve Easterbrook's been in the company not, not much more than nine months ago, uh, when he first came in, he said this, we are taking bold, urgent action to reset the business. He understood that where McDonald's is today is not where they need to be, and he's working on improving it. And the short time he's been there, he has turned around plan has enabled U.S. same store locations to increase their sales in the third quarter of 2015 by 0.9%. Uh, this was surpassed the expectation of a 0.2% loss. Uh, this is the first sign of growth that McDonald's has had in over two years. Uh, while Easterbrook recognizes that they are won a battle here with quarter three, they are still losing the war. He's working very hard to make sure that they are having sustainable revenue and income growth in order to achieve the full turnaround. So five points that we want them to implement into their strategy or move forward with would be reinventing that strong brand image that they once possessed. Um, it's not really a question of whether they can still flip burgers or fry fries, but more or less can they uh, fix that negative perception that consumers have put on McDonald's. And, and I think that's been, the trust has been lost through questionable ingredients and, and ways that they are going about their business. Uh, as far as many changes, they, we saw talk of possibly adding a gourmet burger that would cost above more than $12. Uh, there was things to talk about um, a kale burger, a salmon salad. These are many changes that we feel are too drastic. We suggest doing smaller changes uh, to existing items, increasing the quality of the ingredients, sourcing them from better locations. Uh, just recently, they switched the main ingredient of their chicken sandwiches from margarine to butter, or what they cook them in, and, and chicken sales rose over 1% by changing one ingredient. These are the type of changes that we're looking to make. Younger generations, we think this is a huge opportunity to talk into the generation. Um, the younger generation wants instant gratification, and they might not necessarily wait for higher quality, so uh, implementing the doubling drive-throughs uh, or the kiosks that allow them to um, order what they want when they want is um, a great addition. As far as the global company going local, to elaborate a little more, uh, we feel like Zaxby's does a great job of this. If you look in the Zaxby's location, all the decor and the paintings and the, everything that's mounted on the wall is geared towards the area that it's with. We feel like McDonald's could do that on a, on a similar scale. If you looked at Appalachia, maybe have a log cabin themed playpen or decorations that match the area, obviously that would be much different than what you would have in downtown New York City location. And then finally, remodel. Um, we saw this was a huge hit with Mint Cafe. There was new exterior and interior designs, which I believe was an aggressive way to get consumers back in the door, which will then lead to fixing the negative perception. Um, remodeling can also, uh, like Dunner said, doesn't have to be uniform, but it can be done to stomp out uh, those outdated Burger Kings and also to pry away customers from uh, like a Chipotle or Panera. 
Our big idea for McDonald's is the McFresh. We think that they need to create a brand new restaurant under the same golden arches that everyone knows. Uh, the McCafe was a bold and innovative move that matched well with McDonald's past successes, and we think that the McFresh could be the same thing. Uh, currently, there's only so much that the franchises can handle, and so much change that they can handle, and they, McDonald's needs an outlet for radical change. That's where we think the McFresh would come in. Uh, obviously, the first thing you'd have to do with the McFresh is start with healthy and fresh ingredients. Uh, we recommend sourcing them from global supplier or local suppliers and providing a higher quality meal. Uh, this would allow them to compete with the fast casual restaurants that they're trying to compete with now. Uh, the undercover identity, similar to what Mallory said, coming into a store that you haven't been to before, just a new reason to go in and see what McDonald's now has to offer through the McFresh. Uh, extensive training, the fast casual dining restaurants that McDonald's is trying to compete with, like Panera or Chipotle, has their employees very well trained, and we think that McDonald's at the McFresh would need to do the same thing. The welcoming atmosphere and the music and electronics, again, just catering to the younger generation and the new customer that we would be hoping to attract with the McFresh. So finally, McFresh would be um, catered to a completely different crowd than McDonald's. Um, we want to emphasize it's going to be a complete different menu, and it's going to be local and fresh to follow that current health trend. So that's going back to the non-GMOs, the fairness to animals and um, humans. Um, and also, it would be uh, there be it would be led by great leadership. Um, so we would take the strategies from McDonald's, like uh, the three-legged stool, and also uh, we want to make tough choices because those bold choices are what consumers are going to notice. And then just the icing on the cake, customer service is going to want to make them come back or, or give referrals. So we are very excited about the launch of McFresh because McFresh is innovation and innovation is McDonald's. Three things we'd just like to leave you with today. Uh, we just want to point out how the changing customer preferences change an entire industry. That can be applied in any industry. Consumers today want healthy food and it morphed the entire fast food industry. Uh, the second thing we'd like to point out is the cash in the balance sheet. The only reason McDonald's has been able to be bold and innovative, which has allowed them to survive, is because they could afford to adapt and experiment to find out with what the customer wants. And the third thing we'd like to leave you with, the McFresh is a bold and innovative move. Bold and innovative moves have allowed McDonald's to succeed from the very beginning, and that's the only thing that will allow them to continue to survive. Questions? What do you think about McFresh? James says he'd go into McFresh as long as I had a whiskey sour to go with it. <laughs> a fear. Michael, what do you think about the question? Well, I don't know. I kind of like to make lush a little better for a little better. <laughs> well, I think I you like need to explain how that McLush came about. <laughs> you know, you know what? It, it was uh, before yesterday we were going through this, and uh, they were going to call it McLush. The word lush has a several connotations. <laughs> which I thought, <laughs> which I think parents would not have agreed with for their happy day with kids. Do you think this was an innovative presentation? Very good. Yeah, right on Very target, good. right? Uh, your professors, by the way, and some of you perhaps might remember that we went to look at some these McRae business students competing in a program called the NACTUS. Professor Anderson I could not help but see that these presenters, and I'm sure James and Matt as well, could compete with those people oh, outside. It was an excellent presentation excellent. in the way they handled it. They were very professional and they set a standard for these McCray going forward, in my opinion. So, if there are no questions, we thank you very much for your hard work. <laughs> I understand that now that they're entrepreneurs, they're selling these, these uh, packets and they will distribute them after the presentation.